DevOps Shorts, DevOps Shorts, the show to listen to when your DevOps hurts. And even when you're going strong, it's short and sweet, so come along. Hello folks, and welcome to another episode of DevOps Shorts, the show where we invite wonderful human beings to have a lightning fast conversation about devs, ops, and other mythical creatures. The show where each episode lasts only 15 minutes and we only ask three questions. Why? Well, so it's short and sweet. That's what makes it short and sweet. And why? Well, it's because Great delivery comes in small batches. We all know that. And today I'm very happy to have Jonathan Hall with me. So Jonathan, in your bio, it says that you're a DevOps coach on a mission to bring enterprise DevOps benefits to small teams. And uh, we'll of course be happy to hear about more about that. And that you have over, over three decades of uh, experience in software development, two decades in technical leadership roles, and you're also a regular blogger on topics of Agile and DevOps principles, and that's great, of course. And uh, you also dance salsa, and you're based in Amsterdam. That's all correct. <laughs> so how yes. are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Wonderful, happy to have you, and uh, let's go straight into our three questions. Wonderful. So the first question is, uh, as usual, about love. So I have this assumption that everybody who comes to the show loves what they do. I may be right, I may be wrong. You'll be the one to tell me if that's true. Usually everybody says they love what they do. So the question is, why? Why do you love being in IT? What's there to love about this? And I hit the timer and go. Thank you. I, love this. I love this question. Uh, I think I was eight years old when uh, one night uh, I was sleeping in my bedroom, which was next to the family living room. And my father was playing on our Commodore 64. He, he, was a, he was a writer, so he used it mostly for word processing. But this night he made it make some weird noises. It was beeping and chiming and everything. And I woke up well past my bedtime. I knew I would get in trouble. And I walked in and said, dad, what are you doing? And he said, I'm programming the computer. You can look at it tomorrow, go back to bed. <laughs> From that day forward, I was I was going to the public library and this before the internet, of course. I was checking out books uh, from the public library on basic programming for the Commodore 64. I just loved making the computer do stuff. It would follow my instructions if I could just learn its secret language. And ever since then, I've been fascinated with programming and and that uh, that love has grown into uh, a, a broader sense of just how software delivery works, how people interact with computers, with technology. And, and make computers and technology do things. I love it. Okay, so yeah, back in the days of Commodore 64. Uh, but has anything changed in that, in that uh, relationship with the computers over the years? What hasn't changed? Uh, yeah, th things are, are much more streamlined, a lot more efficient nowadays. Um, there's still room to improve, of course. Um, but th that's, that same love of just making, making technology do my bidding, that, that love is still there. That, that's, that's what makes me excited about IT. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can say. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, making machines dance. Uh, I love exactly. this analogy. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so that was short and sweet. And we have more time for the blitz questions in the end. And we'll go straight to our next question. And that question is about DevOps. This show is called DevOps Shorts for something. And uh, well, it's about the DevOps aha moment. So in the DevOps book, DevOps handbook, the authors talk about their DevOps aha moment, that moment when they realized that the way the things used to work in IT 10 years ago, those that way sucked but there was a better way and that way was DevOps. The whole DevOps revolution started and uh, now we're uh, hopefully better off. Now, what was that DevOps aha moment for you? Was there such a moment, uh, maybe a number of moments? Would like to hear the stories about this. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, it's hard to look back at a specific moment. I, I think it's like when you're driving from one city to another, eventually you cross a state line or a country, a country boundary. Maybe you didn't notice when you crossed it, but you're definitely in the new country, the new state now. It was kind of like that for me. You know, there was there was some point when I I looked back like I, I'm doing DevOps now. I don't know exactly when I changed, but I can definitely point to one story that was very pivotal in my, in my DevOps journey. I didn't know DevOps. I don't think DevOps as a term existed yet when this story happened. Um, but I think it was in 2006. I had just started at a new company. We were doing spam filtering and we pushed out a release that broke every customer's server. Uh, it was, you know, in retrospect, it was a simple, it was a simple break. It was, it was a permissions bit. We forgot to set the execute bit on a script. Uh, but the lessons from that, uh, that experience, uh, they're still with me. Um, I, I think a, a very simple way to look at that sort of scenario is, okay, how do we make sure that we don't break the permissions bit again and, and maybe add an extra test at the end or have a human do some extra testing. But what I like to take away from this story is that the fact that the permissions bit was wrong means a systemic problem existed. And I think DevOps really helps us to, to, to focus and, and get into what broke in the system that we can fix to improve this. Uh, in, in that case, we had a really complicated release process. We had manual tests going on, a manual, actually we were manually creating zip files to upload to FTP servers. You know, it, was, it was a completely manual process. And uh, so, yeah, I like to apply, I, I, I look back at this as sort of an example of the wrong way to do things and, and don't do that anymore. And uh, yeah, how, how can I say that? That's, uh, that's probably the closest I have to a moment even though the, the light went off in my head maybe a couple of years after that story took place. Mm -hmm. And when was the first time you heard the, the term DevOps and when you realized, oh, oh, that's what I've been doing for a couple of years now? Yeah, so the, the first, the, the, there's actually two answers to that question. The first time I heard the term DevOps was a few years later. At the same company, we introduced a DevOps team. Uh, which did operations for us. Okay. Now, looking back, a I realized- Classical was... anti-pattern, huh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So looking back, I'm like, that wasn't actually DevOps. Uh, so it was probably in the last 10 years or so that I looked back and, and realized uh, DevOps is not a team. It's, it's, it's more like cooperation. I mean, if, if you could replace the word DevOps with cooperation and it makes sense, maybe you're on the right track. But a cooperation team doesn't work in my mind. So, <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, uh, th those are the two answers. I, I heard the term, a few years later, I heard it incorrectly, the anti-pattern, the famous anti-pattern. Uh, a few years after that, I realized that was wrong. DevOps is actually pretty cool. It's a, it's a good way to think about things. And yeah, that's what I dedicate my career to now. Mm -hmm. And wh when did you make the switch to, to becoming a DevOps coach? That's a great question. Um, I've been doing DevOps coaching stuff, even in my day job for the last five years or, or, or longer. Um, so I've been helping the teams I work on to adopt CI/CD patterns, uh, to to do shorter iterations, to you know true true continuous integration, um, in the sense of merging multiple times a day. Um, I sort of branched out on my own about a year and a half ago uh, when I started uh, doing this for clients, and uh, yeah, that's where I am now. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. That's that's an important uh, job you're doing. Thank you. Solving pains, real pains for real real people. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, we still have some time left over from this question too. And uh, without further ado, let's go into the future. There is my favorite question now because it's concerned with the future. I like to call myself a software delivery futurist, whatever that might mean. And uh, now is your opportunity to tell us what you think the future holds for DevOps, for IT in general, for the humankind, okay. uh, <laughs> go wild. Any vision you have in your head, you know, being a coach, you're responsible for, you know, setting the goals, for taking teams forward. What's that forward? Where, where are you taking the, your, your clients? Great. So uh, I think, I think our industry, maybe most industries, but this one in particular, works in on a long time frame. In, in, in the sense of, we get some good ideas. Uh, maybe agile was a good idea, for example, but it takes a decade or two decades before those good ideas start to become mainstream and people really pick up on them. And, and of course, by the time they start picking up on them, then somebody does the wrong thing and they start doing these anti-patterns like DevOps teams. <laughs> 
but that's a good sign. That means people are picking up on the idea, at least, even if they don't quite get it right. So I think the future holds, uh, you know, a, a lot of the things that these big companies, Google and Netflix and Spotify, they, they keep talking about these great things, uh, bleeding edge Kubernetes and uh, just new ways of, of doing uh, Chaos Monkey and all, all these great technology that I think are they're amazing. I think in 10 years and in 20 years, they'll become more attainable for smaller teams, the kind of teams I work with. So that, that's what I'm looking forward to is I, I'm, I'm looking for a Chaos Monkey as a service <laughs> that I can subscribe to for $29, $29 a month for my small team to start using with, with three developers or something like that. Uh, you know, I think that'll be great. And, and we, we see it happen all the time. It's happening with Kubernetes now. Uh, before that, AWS, even before Kubernetes. Uh, so you know, these, these big companies have great, amazing ideas. Somebody figures out how to distill those into the core essence and package it so that small teams, uh, maybe even a solo project, an open source project, can start using these techniques without being uh, so-called rocket scientists. So, yeah, I, I, I need to keep talking so I hear the gong at least once, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my short answer already. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm too good at delivering in short, uh, compact segments. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually... <laughs> That's important. <laughs> That's great delivery, certainly. Uh, yeah, well, so so something like, you know, what uh, platform as a service uh, wa was uh, in envisioned like, you know, a, a great yeah. platform for everybody to, to use without uh, any special knowledge, without very high investments in, in making this platform scalable, reliable, resilient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, something like that. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, I, I, know, I know we'll get there. And do, do you see glimpses of that? Like, okay, you're saying, okay, it's, it's easier to roll out Kubernetes now because, you know, cloud providers do that. But then you're running your own apps on Kubernetes. You're more or less on your own now. There, I mean, so it, it happens from different angles all the time. I mean, just Kubernetes as a service is one example. But then you also have just new frameworks coming coming out that make writing a REST API or a microservice. You know, gRPC is a good example. Protobuf. You know, there's little bits of technology all over the spectrum that, that contribute to this vision I have of big ideas being accessible to the little team. Uh, so yeah, I, I see it happening in every way, not just as a service. Um, also, new libraries, new platforms, new frameworks. Um, Do you think serverless is anywhere on that spectrum? I'm sure it is. I don't know where. Um, serverless still has a lot of hype around it. Uh, it makes it hard to to tell what is what's what's really valuable there and what's just what's just exciting because it's geeky and what it really is <laughs> and what it really is. Yeah. <laughs> Too much yeah. buzz. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I know that something's going to come out of that. Um, uh, but it, it's too early from from my perspective. It's too early to say what's going to be this, the holding power of serverless. I know it will be there in ten years, but I expect it will look different than we expect right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what what do you see today as the largest enablers of small teams that you're working with? The the main things I see right now are are server services like GitHub and GitLab that provide a sort of a, almost. Uh, and the here's the gong. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, wonderful. We've hit the gong on that and we still have a minute and a half for blitz questions. Okay, so the usual, uh, well, first of all, I ask everybody who comes on the show, would you or do you invest in cryptocurrency and would you recommend to invest in cryptocurrency? No. No, okay. Everybody says, says no, that, that's <laughs> wonderful. You, you would expect of, you know, tech I, geeks to be more, I, 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 more enthusiastic about this. I have used cryptocurrency to transfer money internationally, but not as an investment. Okay, I see. So what do you think is the most exciting tech outside of information technology? Personally, uh, space exploration. And I don't mean human space exploration, but sending probes to other stars and, and new telescopes. Uh, that's fascinating. It's not very practical, but I love it. Mm -hmm. what, what fascinates you about space? Everything. Uh, <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could spend an hour talking about this. I used to lie in the, in the backyard with my dad and look at the stars and he'd tell me how many millions of light years away those stars are. And I was like, That's, that boggles the mind. So just, just learning about, about space, about stars, exoplanets, 
All that okay. stuff fascinates me. Enterprise or startups? Uh, where would you rather work? Inter sorry? Oh, en enterprise? En or enterprise? Startup? Yeah. I, I heard you say enterprise. I'm thinking the Starship Enterprise. After talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah space. because we're talking about space. <laughs> exactly. Uh, startups. I prefer startups. Okay. Why? And we've hit the gong. So, <laughs> actually, I, I, I think the, the answer is quite understandable, but that's, you know, we, we'll leave uh, it to listeners' imagination. That's right. Thank you, Jonathan. It was so much fun having you. Thank you so much. Short and sweet. Thank you for listening and watch out for new episodes of DevOps Shorts.